everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I think everyone's logged in like I was going to say, sorry. Uh, my name is Megan Kelly. I am the Senior Assistant Director of Admission uh, at the Mass College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences University. I am located on the Boston campus um, or from home today. Um, but here with me, I do have a few of my colleagues um, and I'll turn it over to them to introduce themselves. So I'll start with Hannah. Um, Hannah, would you introduce yourself? Yes, of course. Hey, everyone. I'm Hannah Castle. I also work in the admission office here at MCPHS. I'm primarily based out of our Manchester, New Hampshire campus. Um, we also have another colleague. He is not here today, uh, but he his name is uh, Christian uh, Duperville, and he works at our Worcester campus. Um, so welcome. And um, I will now turn it over to our uh, faculty members to introduce themselves to you as well. I guess I'll go first. Um, my name is Deb McManus. I'm the Associate Dean for the Boston Campus Nursing Program. So uh, thank you for having me today. Uh, my name is Erica Bush. I am a full, fa full faculty member in the Worcester campus. Um, I teach in both the 300 or mid-level and senior 500 level. Hello, my name is Emily. I am a student um, on the Worcester campus. Uh, my previous undergrad degree was in biology. Um, I studied that at Framingham State, and I'm currently in the 400 level, which is the third semester out of the four. Wonderful. Thank you so much, everybody. We're so pleased to be here today to talk about the university offerings uh, through our School of Nursing. Um, during this webinar, we will talk about the university itself, the post-baccalaureate BSN program, how to apply, and then we will end with the Q&A to cover any additional questions that you might have um, that we haven't covered. If you do have any questions during this presentation, please do feel free to leave them in the Q&A box at the corner of your screen, um, and we'll be happy to answer those after the presentation. Um, please do take note that this webinar will be recorded, so if you miss anything or you need to log out before the end, you're welcome to contact us for the link after, okay? Um, so with that being said, let's get started. So first off, congratulations on your decision to pursue a career in healthcare and in nursing. Um, healthcare is a great field to get into right now. Um, the, the field is pretty high in demand, um, especially with an aging population. And the demand is projected to increase over the next several years. As we can see here, uh, the US Bureau of Labor Statistics states that one third of all new jobs through um, 2026 will be in the healthcare industry. Um, so you're setting yourself up really for success here. Um, with that being said, our students here at MCPHS are finding job placements soon after graduation, and some are even receiving job offers before they graduate. Um, not only does the field of nursing have a very strong projected grab, job growth outlook, um, it really ranks upon the top 30 healthcare careers, according to US News and World Report. Um, and we do realize that returning to school for your degree will definitely be an investment of both your time and your money. Um, but based on the job outlook and the quality of education we provide, we really do believe that this is going to be a good investment of your resources. And there are so many opportunities to look forward to. Um, and this is the right step just by joining us here today. Um, but before I move on, I'd like to turn it over to our faculty for our first kind of um, question or first share um, and just share a little bit more about the possibilities in the field of nursing. Um, so we'll start with uh, Professor McManus and then we'll move on to Professor Bush. Um, do you uh, mind sharing a little bit more details about the career opportunities that you're seeing our students have? Well, I think it's it's never been a more wonderful time to go into nursing because I can say I've been in nursing, you know, for decades and you know, before, you know, back in the day, you'd go into nursing and there'd be limited opportunities to be to get into specialties such as pediatrics, obstetrics, whatever field you're really, you know, focused on getting into and where you want to give back to the field. But I feel that now our new grads 
have really been able to go, you know, right from graduate, right from graduation into some really great opportunities out in the nursing field. And I, you know, I, I, I do unfortunately see that there are a lot of gaps, you know, in jobs and because of the nursing crisis. So, you know, now is the time to take advantage of the profession. I think there's more opportunities than ever. And, and just meeting with our grad, uh, grads and having a lot of you know, alums come by, you know, after graduation, it's really been great to see all the opportunities that they're getting into right away. Thank you so much. Erica, would you mind sharing? I would be happy to. Um, I graduated in 2006, which seems like forever ago. And I remember when I graduated that um, the hospital, I um, this was a school of nursing um, in a hospital system, and they had only uh, 30 slots for jobs. Um, and there were 50 of us graduating. So it was just a different time. And it was really unheard of for a new graduate to be um, welcomed and not just welcomed, but sought after into specialty. So I mentioned I teach in the 500 level. Um, I teach 504, which is our advanced med search course in Worcester campus. Um, a few of my students um, have the ability to partake in um, preceptorship clinical, which is a special clinical. We'll talk more about that later. But they left their preceptorship in 504 all with job offers to where they did their preceptorship. And I think this is really, really special. And these um, places are cardiac ICU. Um, one of them is at Tufts with the heart transplant team and, and that floor. Um, amazing specialty and um, really unheard of when I remember when I was a new graduate. So it's a very exciting time. There's really no locked door. There's no no. Everything is absolutely open to our new graduates. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. So MCPHS is a healthcare specific university and we do offer a hundred different programs in different fields. Um, and we've been around for a very long time, over 200 years, uh, with what started as just a pharmacy program here on the Boston campus. MCPHS has grown to incorporate over 7,500 diverse students uh, between our three campuses, as well as our online branch. Um, but healthcare is our specialty. Uh, and many of our faculty are still working in the field. Um, and they're also teaching with us. Um, they are very well versed in the course material and they're constantly staying up to date with what's going on in the healthcare system. And they have a pulse on the trends and, and uh, the most up to date databases and everything like that. So you are learning from the best here. Um, and then through school sponsored events and other social activities, our students do learn a lot about different other healthcare professions, um, even before entering the field. Um, lastly, we do pride ourselves on maintaining clinical affiliations with some of the leading medical institutions in the nation. Um, we'll touch upon that in a few detail or in more detail in a few slides, um, but we do have ample clinical affiliations for our students. We don't expect you to go out and find your own, which some students think they have to, uh, but we do have a clinical placement team um, and clinical placement coordinators here to help you find your placement from our database. Um, so again, we'll touch on that in a few slides though. So here's a look at each of our campus locations if you're considering our nursing program but you're not too sure about where you wanna go, which location you wanna go to. Um, so our Boston campus, which was founded in 1823, um, that's our largest and oldest campus. Um, it is located in the Longwood Medical Area, which is surrounded by several well-known healthcare facilities you may have heard of. Um, and a majority of the programs that we offer in this campus are undergraduate. Uh, but we also do offer a variety of graduate, doctoral, and certificate programs here too. Um, so there's just, there's many opportunities there um, being our largest campus. Um, there is university sponsored housing, AKA dorms available for students on this campus as well. Um, if you are interested in living on campus. Um, then about 40 miles west of Boston, um, we do have our Worcester campus. Uh, and Worcester is home to our second largest campus. Um, and that was founded in um, 
2000 in the year 2000 that's it um it's the second largest city in new england um after boston so it's definitely a hot place to be um and it is definitely one of the fastest growing clubs of innovation in the u.s um I think it was NPR recently deemed Worcester as the new it town. Um, the, it's home of the Woo Sox, I believe they're called. So there's definitely a lot happening there, which is fantastic. Also home to several pretty large healthcare institutions. Um, again, you'll find the healthcare right at your fingertips. So there's St. Vincent's Hospital there. Um, UMass Memorial Medical Center, which is part of the Massachusetts the largest integrative healthcare systems right down the street from our school. Uh, there are, again, other various healthcare opportunities all within a 10 mile radius, so pretty close. Um, all of the programs that we offer on that campus are either graduate, doctoral, or post-baccalaureate. Um, so you will find your average freshman there. You will find folks who are um, seeking a little bit um, higher education, if you will, or a second bachelor's type degree. Um, there is university sponsored housing available for students on that campus, aka dorms, if that's something you're interested in. Um, sorry if you can hear my phone, someone keeps calling me. <laughs> um, then lastly is our Manchester campus, founded in 2002. Um, and that campus is located in downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, this is really the smallest of our campuses, and it's about an hour north of Boston. Um, and our Worcester campus, or our um, Boston and the Worcester campuses are all within driving distance um, to, again, several healthcare facilities in the state of New Hampshire, uh, including including Elliott Hospital, there's Concord Hospital, um, Dartmouth, Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center, and many more. Um, on that campus, we just offer the post-baccalaureate, graduate, and doctoral programs. Um, Off-campus housing is available, so it's a little bit of a caveat. There is no on-campus, but we do offer off-campus housing. Um, on that campus. So um, with that being said, I'll turn it over to Hannah and she can talk a little bit more about, um, you know, how we are dedicated to making sure our students are successful, really. Wonderful. Thanks, Megan. Um, yeah, so our uh, university here at MCBHS has a reputation that is uh, dedicated to the success of our students with an immersive hands-on culture. Um, so starting with our interprofessional education, we also call it IPE. Um, at least once a semester, students participate in IPE activities where they engage with students from other programs. Um, so as a healthcare institution, we have many programs um, beyond just nursing. Um, so it could be anything from, you know, PA to occupational therapy. We also have dental hygiene. So there's many other health science programs. So you actually get to engage with students from um, those programs uh, at least once a semester. So for example, nursing students might work with pharmacy students or do activities with PA students. And it's really a great way for students to learn about other healthcare professions, how to work with patients um, from different cultures and backgrounds and uh, the functions of a, of a team uh, and how to work as a team once employed in the healthcare system. So it's really bridging that gap um, and allowing you to collaborate together because um, healthcare really is all about treating the patient as one team. Uh, so Emily, I'm actually going to turn it over to you. I'm hoping um, you can share a little bit more about some of the IPE activities and experiences that you've gotten exposure to um, and how you feel that prepared you for your future career as a nurse. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the first semester, so last fall, um, we got to do um, it, it was it was a pretty large event. Um, we all got to go to the Lincoln Building um, and sit in the big conference room. And we um, there was they tried to make it even with like one student from every program at every table. So there wasn't necessarily going to be another nursing student with you. And we got to talk to each other about the types of things that we're expected to learn. And then we got to play um, a couple of like fun games, asking questions about which profession is responsible for which role in the patient care. Um, so it was really awesome to sit with other students in different disciplines and discuss with them kind of like our role versus theirs and the things that we would maybe do together for the patient. 
um, we, at the end of this past semester, we also just did, um, there was like a big present a pre where students did their final presentations. Um, so that was very cool too, to go around and see kind of what everybody has been working on for at least a couple of semesters. Um, so you get to see the research part of what everybody is able to do too. And it, it's really, it's really lovely to be connected with all of the other disciplines in a way that we get to learn about each other so that we can apply it in the future with our patients. Wonderful. Well, thanks for sharing. And I'm sure you probably have a couple other um, IPE events coming up either this summer or in the fall semester. So that'll be yeah. exciting. Yes, I'm looking forward to them. Yeah, awesome. Great. Well, yeah, thanks for sharing about that. And um, in addition to IPE, we also have um, hands-on supportive faculty right down the hall from where you're um, going to be having classes and labs in each academic building. Um, and they have scheduled office hours, uh, but they're also available to help students um, throughout the day too. So, um, you know, know that they are a resource to you while you're going through the program. You're not going to do this alone. Uh, we are, you know, in and an institution that's all about teaching students. So we want to make sure you're set up for success. So they are available to help you um, with anything that you need during the program. Uh, we also have services and, and resources through our Center for Academic Success and Enrichment Department, also known as the CASE. Uh, and they are really there to help students who may be struggling academically. Uh, we have peer tutors and mentors available to students who are typically um, students uh, who are further along in their program and they can definitely serve as a resource to you if you need any help. Um, we also have on-site counselors for mental health emergencies and wellness, um, as well as a center for career services where they can assist with um, different things like resume writing, mock interview, um, networking opportunities for when that time comes. Um, and apart from academics, we also have options to join both nursing specific organizations as well as cross programmatic uh, clubs. Um, so the nursing program is, is definitely going to be busy. It's, you know, 16 months long year round, but there are plenty of opportunities to get involved in things outside of school like student government association, um, campus activities, doing fundraisers and drives and much more. So. Uh, feel free to, you know, think about joining a club and organization if that is um, of interest to you while you're in the program. Um, Emily, are you by chance part of any uh, clubs or orgs on campus? I'm not a part of um, any clubs, no. Um, there are some really wonderful ones in the in the nursing program specifically that they offer. Um, I am one of the peer tutors, though, and in, in working with Case, it's definitely a, a wonderful resource. Um, and like it, you get to meet other students and like get to get their firsthand um, kind of like take on things. And it's really helpful. I, I, I've gone to Case, too. So it's really it's really a very nice um, service that is offered here. Yeah, well, doing that, too, is definitely a commitment as well. And um, how do you go about kind of managing your time in the program? Because I know you're obviously busy with classes and labs, but also doing that on top of that, like, how do you how do you manage your time? Um, I It definitely took me a little bit to get used to. Every semester is a little bit of a different schedule. Um, but I just kind of like to, you know, I know when I'm going to be in class, I know when I'm going to be in lab, and I know when I'm going to be in clinicals. And then in that free time, I have to decide when I'm going to do my assignments, when I can fit in some tutoring sessions, and then like, but I definitely, I'm not going to lie, I definitely take time for myself too, as, as everybody should. Um, but it, it can be a little tricky at first to figure out the balance. But once you kind of figure out what your preferred routine is and the things that you like to do, maybe you work better in the morning or at night. Um, and once you kind of get the hang of that and you get into a, it a little bit, it's definitely much easier to figure out the balance. But it's most certainly manageable. Um, like I said, I still have free time to do things that I like. So um, I have a, I work too. So it's possible and you, you just have to pick the time and go with it. 
Yeah, for sure. And if, and, you know, obviously it's an adjustment for anyone. So if, you know, you are starting the program and, you know, you are struggling to, to balance your time, you can always lean on your faculty and your peer mentors um, to, you know, figure out a, a, you know, time management schedule that's going to work best for you. So just know that we are here to help you and making sure that you succeed in your program. Um, the final thing I just wanted to touch on too is um, we do have a um, N NCLEX preparation throughout our program too. So obviously taking the NCLEX is the end goal in order to get uh, your RN licensure. So you will get um, NCLEX preparation um, throughout our nursing program here. All right, so moving on, um, I wanted to just uh, briefly touch on the different nursing programs that we offer as it can sometimes be confusing, um, but we are here talking about our post-baccalaureate uh, BSN program, which is designed for students who already hold a bachelor's degree. Um, their bachelor's degree is in something other than nursing. So uh, this is a program uh, that is 16 months long, so Four, four semesters total, and it does go year round. Um, and it's offered across all three of our um, campuses, so Boston, Worcester, and Manchester. Um, so when you apply to the program, you can choose which campus you want to apply to. Um, there are also two different start dates in which students can um, start the program in either fall or spring, whatever works best for you. Um, we also have an accelerated uh, BSN program. Uh, a lot of times people confuse, you know, the post-baccalaureate BSN with the accelerated BSN. But the easiest way to look at the accelerated BSN is it's more of the traditional um, undergraduate BSN program. So it's for students who uh, maybe are coming right out of high school or maybe are transferring from another school. So they don't already have a degree yet. Um, and that program would be a 32 month program and it's at our Boston campus. Um, then we also have some online graduate nursing programs. Um, so if you're looking to continue on with your nursing education after getting your BSN, we do have programs that are offered here at MCPHS for you to be able to do that. Um, we have uh, master level programs as well as um, certificate programs, and then we have a doctor of nursing practice program too. Um, so if you're interested in eventually becoming a nurse practitioner, um, we do have a family nurse practitioner program as well as a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner program. So lots of different options uh, within our school of nursing uh, here at MCPHS. Uh, and during our post-baccalaureate nursing program here, um, our students do have access to a wide array of resources to aid in their learning process and help prepare them for a future career as a nurse. So throughout the program, our students have access to the use of educational technology, um, multiple clinical experiences in a variety of settings, um, and your clinicals actually begin in the first semester, which is the exciting part about the program. Um, and then as previously mentioned, we have NCLEX preparation built into the program, as well as the use of state-of-the-art labs and facilities. Um, for all of your hands-on, you know, lab and clinical um, clinicals in the program. So with that being said, I'm actually going to turn it over to our faculty. I'm hoping you can share a little bit um, more in terms of the lab exposure that students get, uh, get access to in the program and also maybe touch on a little bit more about that NCLEX preparation, if you don't mind. We have um, simulation labs on all three campuses where students go in and do all their uh, lab hands-on skills, which also start in the first semester. You know, we prepare you right away in the lab to be able to go into clinical. So you practice your basic vital signs, medication administration assessments. So that starts right away when you join the program. So we do feel that the lab experience is a big part of the program which includes simulations, which, you know, to um, get a better idea of what that means is, you know, students can go in and actually see 
a simulation unfolding, maybe a scenario that was happening in a hospital or an emergency scenario. We have all many different ones that students practice in, the, in their simulation experience. Um, in terms of NCLEX preparation, the senior level or the 500 level, when you get to the last level before graduation, we have a three-day first NCLEX preparation course, which is immersive um, NCLEX prep for three full days. And throughout the program, we do have an NCLEX coach that students meet with. And really, I do feel that NCLEX preparation questions are filtered throughout the whole program. We call them EAQs, which are um, derived from our HESI program, which really prepare students to take NCLEX. We do have a lot of standardized um, testing that happens during the program in each course. So students are tested quite a bit, so they're ready um, for the NCLEX exam. So Professor Bush, Bush might be able, you know, as faculty offer a different, you know, perspective as well, you know, to, to add to this. Um, thank you, Dr. McManus. That was really complete. Um, I think that students really love simulation. It engages um, learning in such a different way with um, active learning strategies. You are immersed in it. You are, it's, it's fun as well. It is a super fun way to learn because you are acting in a, in a sense. Um, our mannequins uh, respond, they, they uh, have vital signs, they uh, do other fun things. <laughs> um, and your faculty as they run through the sim will guide you um, in that. And everybody gets a role. You can be the nurse or the physician or a family member. Um, so that's it's really fun um, to touch on NCLEX prep. That is throughout the program, and each course um, kind of does their own unique thing that makes uh, makes sense for um, helping you learn the content and also helping you prepare for the big day, which is NCLEX day. Um, for 504, uh, I use a lot of the EAQ products that um, Dr. McManus was speaking of. Um, there is a new test plan that came out last um, last spring called um, Next Generation or NGEN, and it's looking at these questions in a different way, um, much more complex, but also more dynamic in how you answer them. So we really try to incorporate these new test questions um, and learn how to answer them throughout the program. Um, we do have one um, class that my um, my one class that um, is like a sister to the advanced med search, which is pretty much all um, NCLEX prep until um, you're ready to sit for your Hearst review, which is the last thing you will do in the program. So um, we hope to prepare you fully to take the big test. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing. Um, and Emily, is there a particular lab experience that kind of sticks out to you that that was like your favorite? I know you're still, you know, in the process of taking your labs, but um, any that you've taken so far that you've really enjoyed? Um, honestly, I really enjoyed all of the labs. It's really very tied to what we're learning about in lectures. So then when you get to go to lab and do it yourself for the first time, it's that's that's pretty, and the facilities are wonderful. It's it's really set up so lovely for us to learn. Um, I think my favorite, it was a simulation <laughs> and my patient had a tracheostomy and it fell out and <laughs> um, I had to put it back in, yes. And while it was a plastic doll, I was still very scared, but I am, I'm glad that the first time I did that was on the mannequin and not on a real person. So I definitely feel like the things that we learn in lab prepare us for our clinical experiences. Cause we, I mean, you go from everything to wound dressings to putting tracheostomies back in. Um, and when you get to go then to clinical and apply those skills that you learned in lab, it's, it really comes full circle and you really feel like you're like, I did learn this and I, I feel comfortable doing this now with, with real people. That's cool. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of the lab, um, what you learn in lab, you're like, Oh, when you get to clinical, you're like, Oh, that makes sense. I learned that in lab. I'm yeah, I can, I'm seeing it in real life. <laughs> yes. Very cool. 
Um, well, speaking of clinicals, uh, we will turn it over to share with you what the different clinicals are that you'll do in the program. So here is a, here's a look at the different rotations that you'll do. Um, so you will have a med surge, um, you'll have mental health, maternity, pediatrics, community health, um, as well as advanced med surge. Um, and we, like Megan mentioned at the very beginning, we have clinical affiliations with um, a lot of different uh, medical institutions uh, around um, the Massachusetts area and as well as in New Hampshire and surrounding um, uh, you know, uh, states in uh, New England. Um, but if you are, you know, attending one of our Massachusetts campuses, you tend to do your clinicals within, um, you know, an hour's drive or less from your home campus. And then if you're attending in New Hampshire, um, you would actually do your clinicals in New Hampshire um, within like an hour's drive or less. Um, so I'll actually turn it back over to, to, to the faculty, um, if you wouldn't mind just kind of sharing a little bit more details in terms of the different clinicals that students do get exposure to. Um, if you could also maybe share how they're supervised, um, how students are assigned to their clinicals, all that good stuff. So um, clinicals are assigned to students by our clinical team. We actually have a clinical associate dean that heads the team. Students do not arrange for their own clinical experiences. You know, we do that for them. Um, and as mentioned here on the slide, rotations can cover med surge, you know, my, psychiatric mental health, maternity, peds, um, community health experiences. So students, um, as mentioned too, may generally travel even more than an hour or, or sometimes less, depending on where the facility is. Um, we offer a variety of them. Many students come thinking they'll be placed just on Longwood. However, it extends, you know, much further than that, especially if it's at the Boston campus. You know, we do go beyond that um, area, but there are many, many experiences, very varied experiences for the students. And then when students get to their upper level, we do a preceptorship. So that's given to our 500 level students where they are assigned a one-on-one. -on -one. They'll be with a nurse and they apply for those. Um, and then generally we accept applications and students are given those experiences, which students really love that because they get a lot of time, you know, in that facility that they're generally maybe interested in. And students even have secured job opportunities because of it. So our experiences are, are really important to our students. We offer at this time 450 hours of clinical experience um, from start to finish in the nursing program. So um, really important to how you connect the dots, you know, once you're ready to go into practice. And as we mentioned, we start right away in the courses with clinical. Uh, Professor Bush, is there anything that you wanted to add to that? Uh, I'll I'll just end with saying that um, that was um, pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, I would just say that the learning happens in clinical. Uh, it's uh, it's what we learn about in class is really experienced through um, doing it at clinical, and um, each course has its own allotment for hours. It starts off um, smaller and ends heavier at and the 500 and the senior level. Um, in 504, students will do 135 of the clinical hours um, of the total of 450. And that's over all four semesters. Uh, preceptorship is um, offered in the 500 level. Um, preceptorships not everybody can unfortunately participate in preceptorships because um, it's what the hospitals, um, when you apply for it, it's what they accept. So last semester, for example, I had six students in preceptorship and the rest were in traditional clinical experiences. But I will promise you that even if you didn't get a, a preceptorship, not number one, not everyone is, some people are better in a group other than one-on-one. -on -one. Some people thrive in a one-on-one. -on -one. So we have emergency room uh, clinical experiences, ICU, um, advanced tele, uh, cardiac. So 
especially in the 500 unit, you are getting advanced med surge, no matter which clinical experience you end up in. Um, and your clinical team will work with you if you have a need, for example, um, if you if you uh, work um, or um, you are you do need a car just so everyone understands that you do need to get your transportation to clinical um, but they will work with you um, if you have a special request and they will definitely try to honor that so I would always uh, advocate for transparency and um, and with your faculty as well because we want to hear from you and we understand you have lives you uh, may have uh, jobs you may have children and you I mean we all were adults so we want to support you Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and Emily, I know you've already done some of the clinicals. Um, which ones have you done so far and um, where have you been able to do them? I know you're based out of our Worcester campus, so I wasn't sure where, where you've done yours. Yes, I am at the Worcester campus. Um, first semester, I got to go to um, an assisted living facility, um, which was really nice. Um, Last semester, I went to um, UMass Memorial at the university campus, and I did a med surge rotation on one of their pulmonary floors, um, which was also great. I got a lot of good patient experience there. I'm currently at St. Vincent's doing um, my psych rotation and back at UMass University um, doing my um, pediatric rotation. Perfect. Um, so then you'll probably end with the what the community health and then the advanced med surge in your last yes. semester. Yes. Wonderful. Hopefully That's exciting. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yes. Fingers crossed for that preceptorship, right? <laughs> Wonderful. Well, um, yeah, so I mean, definitely the clinical experiences is the fun part about the program. That's really when you kind of put everything together. Um, so, you know, we're excited, you know, for your future as a, as a nurse and uh, hopefully you'll consider joining the program so that you get exposure to all the fun and exciting things that our nursing students um, do get exposure to here at MCPHS. Um, so with that being said, I am actually going to turn it back over to my colleague, Megan. Um, I'm hoping that she can share a little bit more about the application process. Um, if you've already applied and you've already been accepted, congrats. And uh, we hope that you'll consider joining the program. But if you haven't already applied, Megan will definitely walk you through that process. Thank you so much, Hannah and everybody that I've been, you know, behind the scenes here listening in and hearing some wonderful things about our program. I just always love to hear. So um, hopefully after today's presentation, our folks who are just joining us for the first time tonight, you'll think about submitting an application to our program. Um, let me walk you through the process. So um, as previously mentioned, we do have two different start terms per year for the post-baccalaureate nursing program, the fall and the spring. Um, we are currently accepting applications uh, for the fall 2024 semester. We've do you have space still on all three campuses? Um, and we do still welcome you to apply. Um, we do accept applications on a rolling admissions basis. So it's really best to submit that application as soon as you can, AKA now is not, is, is the best time. I, should say. I, was, I was gonna say is never a better time, but now is the best time. Um, and so um, what you'll do is you'll complete the nursing cast application. You'll start the app, send in your documents, submit it. Um, and, you know, then your application will become verified, we'll get it. Um, the documents that are required are all official transcripts from all colleges and universities that you've attended. Um, if you attended a school outside of the United States, we do need an evaluation um, for that. If, if your transcript is not in English, we will also need a translation for that. Um, and then we also do need a personal statement, about 500 to 1,000 words, um, just describing your goals, reasons for pursuing nursing. That prompt is in the application as well. Um, but soon to apply um, to our Manchester campus, typically we do require a high school transcript as well. I'm not sure if we're still um, requiring that, Hannah, or if that's something they can waive until after. Um, but we do typically look for that. So just in case, you know, you hear from us saying we need a high school transcript. Um, if you apply to the Manchester campus, don't be too alarmed. Um, <clears throat> um, but you can request that, you know, I would say, 
request that right away. And typically, you know, schools are still in session right now, so it shouldn't be too much of an imposition for them to send it over to us. Um, there are no GRE or TES exams required for this program. So um, don't feel like you have to submit those to us. We don't require them. So we do require some prerequisites uh, for the program. And these are really what I call the meat and potatoes of the program. You really need these classes to be successful. We do accept bachelor's degrees really from any discipline, but we have to make sure that you're proficient in these areas. Um, so we do need anatomy physiology one with lab, anatomy physiology two with lab, microbio with lab, gen chem one with lab, gen chem two with lab or nutrition. Um, and then we also need human growth and development. We're looking for a true psychology course that covers from birth until death. We would consider a combination, but we will need the combination to cover birth until death. So we took child development, adolescent development, and let's say uh, adult and aging. That could count, constitute the lifespan. If you just took child development, that will not qualify. We do need the full lifespan, and we are looking for a psychology course, not a biology course. Um, any questions, we're happy to help answer that, but just to shed a little light on it. And then lastly, we also do require statistics. Um, these courses can be in progress or outstanding at the time of application. For instance, if you want to join us this fall, but you don't have that human development class, it's very common for some reason for our post -bac students. Um, but if you don't have that and you want to take it this summer, but you haven't yet enrolled, that's okay. Still submit an application, um, and then you'll want to apply or register for the class and, and send us the proof of your enrollment. Um, so you can apply while working on your prereqs. They just have to be done by the time you sit in seats. That is our only request and requirement, I should say. Um, we do accept AP and CLEP scores as well. Um, and there is a 10-year age limitation on math and science courses. Um, these courses also do have to be a grade of C plus or higher to be eligible for credit. So if you got a C in microbio with lab, you will need to repeat that for a C plus or higher in order to attend. Um, if you're missing any of these, um, prereqs and you're interested in taking them with us. Um, at our MCPHS School of Professional Studies, we do offer these online. Um, I think maybe human growth we don't. There's only one I think that we don't require we don't have right now. Um, but we're happy to make recommendations if you're looking. Um, but our online prerequisite courses are self-paced. Um, and new students are eligible to receive a 50% redu reduction in cost. Um, so if you're interested in that, we're happy to connect you with our School of Professional Studies. Um, one thing about self-paced courses, I'd like to mention just because of where we are with time, you may register for a self-paced course and it says you have 16 weeks to complete that. Great, but you do wanna keep in touch with Hannah and myself because we require that final grade by August 1st. And that may be 12 weeks. So you want to just make sure that if you do register for a self-paced, that you're meeting our requirement, not the length of time that you have to complete it. Um, there is a little flexibility with August 1st. Um, again, don't stress too much if, if the class you're taking right now ends August 16th. That's okay. Let us know. There is a little flexibility, but just keep in mind that if you're joining a self-paced course it, that's 16 weeks on July 1st, you need to complete that in about six weeks. So it will be a little challenging for you. Um, so just again, stay in communication with Hannah and myself over self-paced online classes um, or recommendations on community colleges and we're happy or any other place to take courses we're happy to recommend. Thanks, Megan. Um, and just to touch on housing, just really quickly. Um, so like Megan mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, there is um, on-campus housing that is available at our Worcester campus. And then there's some housing at our Boston campus too. Um, it is somewhat limited, but there there is some housing available. Um, we don't offer housing on our Manchester campus, but we've not really had an issue with students finding housing outside of the Manchester campus. I'm actually based out of our 
uh, Manchester, New Hampshire campus. So if you need any recommendations, I'm more than happy to provide those to you. Uh, we also have an off-campus housing page with a lot of uh, recommendations there too. Um, but if you're interested in one of the Massachusetts campuses, again, there is on-campus housing and there's different options that you can choose from. Anything from studios to suites to condos. Um, there's also apartment style. They're all within close proximity to your classes. Um, and you also have access as a student to uh, fitness centers and cafes, study spaces and computer labs on campus. Um, they are competitively priced um, compared to housing in the area too. So that's also a benefit of living on campus. Um, and you can utilize your financial aid towards housing as well, which is nice. Um, the other great part about it is that they come fully furnished with utilities included. So if you're moving from afar, you don't have to worry about finding um, furniture to furnish your, uh, uh, your living area. Um, and then rent would be charged once a semester if you do live on campus. Um, and then at all of our campuses, um, we uh, do offer parking um, that is available. I know the Boston campus parking tends to be a little bit limited just because uh, of the busy city, <laughs> um, but um, we do have parking um, that is uh, within close proximity to campus um, and then parking is available at our Worcester and Manchester campuses. So again, if you have any questions about any of the housing options, you can certainly feel free to reach out to our admission office and we're more than happy to assist. Um, and then financial aid is also uh, available for this program. Um, it is considered a undergraduate level program, so you would actually fill out the undergraduate FAFSA. Um, and uh, so you would do that by going to studentaid.gov. Um, you would want to make sure to add our school code into your FAFSA. That way we, we receive it and we can provide you with a financial aid award letter breaking down what you qualify for. Um, so our school code is 002165. Um, when you plug it in, it may pop up with the Boston campus, but don't be alarmed. Um, we do all use the same FAFSA code. So if you're applying to our Worcester campus or Manchester campus, your FAFSA will get to us either way. So don't worry too much about that. Um, and then uh, we also offer merit scholarships for this program. Um, so that is something that we will consider you for when you apply to our program. Um, and the merit scholarship cuts down on tuition significantly. So if you are looking at the tuition and fees on our website, please know that this does not um, this doesn't consider the merit scholarship. So um, if you do get a merit scholarship, um, it will significantly cut down on that cost that you see listed there. Um, we also have a student financial services department too. So if you do want to talk more about the different funding options, um, feel free to schedule an affordability appointment with them. They're more than happy to go through your, your different options with you. Um, typically students will fund the program with a combination of different things. Um, they'll do FAFSA, private loans, scholarships, and then I always encourage students to apply for outside scholarships too. Even if it's, you know, you only find 500 or $1,000 in, in outside scholarships, honestly, anything can help um, aid in your education. Um, and just remember too that this is an investment into your future. I mean, the field of nursing is definitely uh, not going anywhere and it's booming. And last I had checked the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the median annual salary of an RN was like $86,000. So um, I promise you, you'll be able to pay your loans back if you do end up taking out loans pretty quickly after. Um, MCPHS actually has one of the lowest default rates in the nation. So um, just promising uh, to know that our students are, are doing well for themselves and are able to pay back any loans they've taken out um, through their education. So um, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions regarding, regarding that. I know it can be scary, so we're here to help you. All right, so that does it for today's presentation. Um, so up on the screen here, we did put our contact information down. Um, so again, I'm Hannah Castle. I work at our Manchester campus. So if you're interested in applying to Manchester, I'd be your go-to. So feel free to take uh, my contact information down. My colleague, Christian, um, he works at our Worcester campus. So feel free to take his contact down. And then Megan uh, works at our Boston campus and her contact information is listed there as well. 
Uh, we also have some great YouTube videos on our page. Uh, so we have two different YouTubes. We have an MCPHS TV as well as MCPHS admissions. Uh, so feel free to take a look at those videos um, to learn more as well. Um, and then if you are interested in coming to campus for a tour, uh, I feel like there's no better way to get a feel of the campus without visiting. So uh, feel free to schedule a tour. We have a couple coming up this summer. Um, so you can do that at mcphs.edu backslash visit. Um, but that does it for today's presentation. Um, we are actually going to open it up to you to see what questions you have for us. So we will stick around for you know, another five minutes or so to see if you have any last minute questions. But otherwise, if you don't, feel free to uh, log off for today and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. I don't see any questions coming in. So again, Hannah mentioned we'll have a few minutes, but um, I did want to take this opportunity to thank you all for being here. Emily, Professor Bush, Professor McManus, it's wonderful to see you, Hannah as well. Um, so thank you so much for taking this time out of your, your busy day and your busy evening to share your, your wealth of knowledges and experiences with us and everything. Um, it's really critical for prospective students to hear this um, so they know they can do it. You know, they know it's it's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. It's going to be a long road. But um, here at MCPHS, we want our students to be successful. They are successful. Um, they have different paths as well. So um, that's exciting. But uh, we do have a question, actually. So um, are students able to work during the program? Now, I know, Emily, you mentioned you may have a little bit of a, a job off, um, you know, while you're in the program. So if you wouldn't mind sharing, then, then maybe we'll hear from Professor Bush or McManus briefly um, just about your thoughts on students working in the program. Uh, so, Emily, why don't you go ahead, if you don't mind? Thank you. Sure. Um, so I have um, a per diem position um, in the emergency department at a hospital. Um, I don't, I'm not required to work very many hours a month. So when I know that like the month, maybe in that month, like I know finals are going to hit or, or maybe that month is just particularly busy. I'll, I'll cut back on the smaller side of, of my requirement. Um, but I do feel like I have time to find those hours. Um, I know that some students, um, some of my peers don't work because that's their preference. They want to just stay focused on school, which is totally understandable. Um, we also like realize that that's not an option for everybody. Some people have to work. Um, some of my peers I know work full time. Um, which is insanely impressive to me, <laughs> um, but they find it doable and um, it's not always an option to not work. So if you think you're going to work during the program, I personally, in my experience, experience would recommend maybe starting on the lower side. And then as you get the hang of it, you get a chance to kind of settle your schedule um, then maybe you'll realize that you have a bit more time to work, but where it can be a bit overwhelming at the beginning, making the transition, also trying to have a full-time job or um, during that can can be a bit a bit stressful. So I mean, I can add that our students, you know, do work, it's very, the working experiences and generally you're in class. Um, so for example, the summer classes are Monday, Wednesday, but students have lab Tuesday, Friday, they may have clinical Thursday or on the weekend. So you really have to look at your individual schedule and try to work around that because we do find school is a priority and you, you do wanna be committed to that. But you know, we do know there are students that are very organized and have been able to do it as well. Yes, thank you so much for sharing that. I always say to students, you know, you know how you manage time best. You want to make sure this is your priority. Um, one of our students in the past shared that he had like an agenda book. Some people use their phones. I don't. I still write everything down. 
the beginning of the semester, he'd go through, write down when all of his papers, his projects, his commitments were, he was married. So whatever his wife said was on the, the docket and, you know, planned all that out. So then he knew what his commitments were and if there was time for anything else. And he did do fundraisers and drives and everything. Um, so I think it is, um, depends on each person and, and what they can do and handle. Um, so I think that's good advice. Thank you, everybody. Um, one more question. Are students able to request clinicals closer to home versus the campus they're attending? Um, so clinical placements could be up to an hour away from your home. Um, so in terms of requesting closer to home versus the campus they're attending, uh, Professor McManus, would you be able to share any insight on that one? So you do put your home address down and the clinical team will look at that. But, you know, as our handbook will tell you, you know, sometimes it's a minimum of one hour that you may have to travel. So just to be transparent, but, you know, we do look at the address of record. Great. Thank you. And we do have an ample database. Um, so, you know, we do want you to have a, a great experience and not necessarily limit you to whether you're 10 minutes from home or an hour from home, we want you to have the best experience um, and pair it with the concept you're learning so that you can be the best um, nurse when it comes to nurse practitioner, nurse when you get to the field. That's our goal. So um, we try not to limit students with that. Um, so with that being said, I think that might be our last question. Um, it's 5.01. Uh, so thank you so much to the folks who asked questions and um, everyone who answered our questions today, everybody for being here. Um, we really appreciate it. If you did want to see this recording um, later, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to Hannah and myself. We're happy to send along the recording. But I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your evening and stay cool. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Thank you.